The computer network is a key component of most organizations today, whether large or small. As a PC hardware technician, you're going to be spending an awful lot of time working with network interfaces. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at some common network interfaces, as well as the media that plugs into them. This is a unique network interface card. Notice that it's an older ISA card. We're not too concerned about that right now. The reason I chose this card to display here is because it has three separate network interfaces built into it. With this particular network card, you run a piece of software on the machine where it's installed, and you use that software to configure the card, such as its interrupt, I.O. address, DMA channel, etc. But you also specify which network connector to use. You can't use all three at the same time. You just pick one of the three. This connector down here is for a 10 base 2 Ethernet network. This connector is for a 10 base 5 Ethernet network. And this connector is for a twisted pair, in this case a 10 base T Ethernet network. This connector down here, which we use for 10 base 2, is called a BNC connector. Well, there's a lot of debate as to what BNC actually stands for. There's many different definitions. For the most part, folks agree that it stands for British Naval Connector. Now, the cable that you connect to a 10 base 2 network looks like this. It's RJ58U coaxial cable. A lot of folks say, well, it looks like my cable TV cable. Similar, but it isn't the same. The electrical properties are different. You connect this cable to this connector to form a computer network. A lot of folks who haven't worked much with 10 base 2 think, oh, I just put it on like this, right? Just slip it down on, and I'm ready to go, right? Wrong. 10 base 2 uses a physical and a logical bus topology. That means the same cable runs from machine to machine to machine. To do that, we have to use this device right here. It's called a T-connector. This is the part that actually connects the network interface card. Then we connect the coaxial cable to it. And from this point, we could attach another cable right here and run it onto the next computer. Now, 10 base 2 networks, because they're wired as a logical bus, they have to use what's called termination. Just like with a SCSI bus, you have to terminate both ends of a 10 base 2 network segment. Therefore, if this were the last network card on the bus, we would install this terminator right here on the end. Now, the next connector we want to look at is this 10 base T connector. We're actually not going to talk about 10 base 5. It wasn't all that widely implemented when it was and it's pretty much dead and gone now. Folks sometimes say 10 base 2 is pretty much dead and gone, and that's true. You probably won't see any new implementations of 10 base 2. However, it was very, very widely implemented in its day, and so there's still a fair chance you're going to run into it. The 10 base T connector uses a physical star topology. We have one network cable that runs to each network interface card on the network, and they're all connected together with a central connecting point called a hub or a switch. The media that's used is unshielded twisted pair. This is an example of a piece of unshielded category 5E unshielded twisted pair wiring, and it uses a connector called the RJ45 connector. It really looks like a telephone plug. It's just a little bit larger. If you were to compare the telephone plug with the RJ45 connector side to side, you would see that they're very similar in, in appearance and construction. Just that the RJ45 is much bigger. If we wanted to connect this workstation to a physical star 10 base T network, we would just plug it in like that. 100 base T and 1000 base T are connected in exactly the same way as 10 base T. Both of those newer standards use an RJ45 jack. It uses a RJ45 plug and category 5 wiring, just like we saw with the 10 base T example. Now, the unshielded twisted pair wiring and the coaxial wiring that we just saw for 10 base T and 10 base 2, both are forms of copper bounded media. You can also implement a network using fiber optic wiring. Let's take a look at a fiber optic network interface card. This is a sample of a fiber optic network interface card. Notice that it's a PCI card. In fact, most of the network interface cards you work with will probably be PCI and interface cards. The card we saw before was an ISA card, and we, the reason we chose it was because it had all three different types of connectors all in one. More than likely, the 100 base T or the 1000 base T network interface cards you're going to work with are probably PCI cards like this one. 
Now, as you can see, the connector on this fiber optic network interface card is slightly different. Instead of having an RJ45 connector or a BNC connector, there's just two plugs. This one's transmit, this one's receive. Instead of using copper wiring, the fiber optic network interface card uses fiber optic media, which looks like this. This part right here receives the light signals that are transmitted on the fiber optic media and converts them into electrical signals that the PC can use. To plug it in, I pull the caps off. This is what the fiber optic cabling looks like with the caps off. And I just plug it into the appropriate connector on the network interface card. Our fiber optic connection is ready to go. Now most organizations don't actually use a lot of fiber optic to the desktop, which is where you're going to be working as a PC technician. Usually fiber optic cable is used for backbones between network segments. However, what you probably will work a lot with is good old twisted pair Ethernet, either 100 base T or 1000 base T.